Hello everyone, welcome to Neuroanatomy sessions. Uh, so we shall begin with Neuroanatomy with the spinal cord which is the lower part of the central nervous system. So we shall start with the spinal cord and uh, slowly gradually we will go up in the central nervous system. So Neuroanatomy here with the spinal cord. Uh, so spinal cord we know it is the terminal part of the hind brain. So it is the continuation of uh, medulla oblongata. So it is the terminal part of the hind brain which is nothing but the myelin cephalon. It is nothing but the myelin cephalon and it is located in the upper two thirds of the vertebral column. So it is below the level of foramen magnum. So from the upper border of the C1 it extends till the lower border of the L1 in adults. It occupies upper two thirds of the vertebral canal. And where uh, it terminates as the lower end is called as conus medullaris which is also called as medullary cone and this is located at the level of lower border of L1 vertebra in adults. At birth uh, it extends from the upper border of the C1 till the lower border of L3. It extends below till the lower border of L3 vertebra. And it reaches to the adult level to the L1 at their 2 years of age after birth. So it reaches to L1 at 2 years after birth. The spinal cord finishes growing at the age of 4 years while the vertebral column finishes growing at the age of uh, 14 to 18 years. So this is the reason why in adults the spinal cord occupies only upper 2 thirds of the vertebral canal. So the growth of the spinal cord is stopped whereas the vertebral canal it uh, grows up till 14 years of age 14 to 18 years whereas uh, the spinal cord stops growing by 4 years of age. And if we see the spinal cord before birth up till the third month of intrauterine life the spinal cord occupies all through the length of the vertebral canal. So till the coccygeal level it is present. And through the each intervertebral foramen, corresponding intervertebral foramen, corresponding spinal nerves used to come out. And later what happens, at the age of 6th month of intrauterine life, the vertebral, that is the vertebral column grows more faster when compared to the spinal cord. So the spinal cord extends till the level of S2, second sacral vertebra in 6th month, during 6th month of intrauterine life. And at the time of birth, the spinal cord reaches to the lower border of L3. And in adults, that is after 2 years, it reaches to the L1. So in adults, it is present to the lower border of L1. And it has got two enlargements, the spinal cord. One, the enlargement is located in the cervical region, which is called cervical enlargement. It extends from C3 to T2 spinal segments from third cervical that is C3 to T2 spinal segments and mainly supplies the shoulder girdle and upper limb forming brachial plexus. It has the maximum diameter at the level of C5. So the maximum diameter of spinal cord is located at the level of C5 that is cervical fifth uh, segment. Next the lumbar enlargement. The lumbar enlargement extends the spinal segments that is L2 to S3. So L2 to S3 segments which supplies the pelvic girdle lower limb forming lumbosacral plexus. And it has the maximum diameter at the lower part of T12. So the maximum diameter in the lumbar enlargement located at the lower border of T12. Whereas in the cervical enlargement it is located at the level of C5 spinal segments. So this is an introduction of spinal cord. So here in this image we can appreciate the lower part of the spinal cord along with the bunch of nerves which are called as corda equina. So phylum uh, terminal it is the continuation of pyomatter below the spinal cord. So the lower part of the spinal cord where it terminates as conus medullaris or medullary cone which is located at the lower border of L1 in adults. 
and beyond that the thin thread like structure which is called as phylum terminal extends from the tip of the conus medullaris all the way till the coccygeal vertebra we can see it is attached to the coccygeal vertebra so this middle thin thread like structure is called as phylum terminal and uh, cauda equina cauda equina are this bunch of nerves which resembles as a tail of horse equina means horse so that is the reason it is called uh, cauda tail equina horse resembles a tail of a horse and uh, lumbosacral spinal nerves form a bundle called as cauda equina meaning horse tail and it consists of uh, the spinal nerves below the level of l1 so we know the spinal cord is ending at, at the level of l1 below the level of l1 whatever the nerves are there they all form a bunch called as cauda equina which consists of l2 to l5 s1 to s5 and coccygeal nerves next about the coverings of the spinal cord which are called as meninges so there are three coverings uh, the outermost is the dura mater then arachnoid mater and the layer which is along the spinal cord intimately attached to the spinal cord is the pia mater so dura mater extends from the foramen magnum till the level of second sacral vertebra that is s2 vertebra and beyond this level it blends with the periosteum as a thin layer surrounding phylum terminal and where it terminates by attaching to the dorsal surface of coccyx so that is the extent of dura mater around the spinal cord so i repeat again the dura mater extends from the foramen magnum till the level of s2 beyond that it continues and blends with the periosteum as a thin layer and finally it terminates by attaching to the dorsal surface of coccyx the space between the inner surface of the vertebral canal this is the space inner surface of the vertebral canal in the dura mater is known as epidural space means the space outer to the dura mater is called as epidural space it is closed above by the fusion of spinal dura with the edge of the foramen magnum so it is closed above with the spinal dura with the edge of foramen magnum and below uh, it uh, con uh, continues as the sacrococcygeal ligament it, that closes the sacral hiatus so below it is closed by sacrococcygeal ligament which closes the opening of the lower end of the sacrum which is called as sacral hiatus so the difference between the dura mater of the spinal cord and dura around the brain uh, in uh, spinal cord the dura mater is present as a single layer which is called as the meningeal layer whereas uh, the dura mater around the brain is double layered so it has got two layers meningeal layer and endosteal layer and epidural space is present in the spinal around the spinal cord so in this uh, the du dura mater around the spinal cord surrounded by epidural space whereas epidural space is absent around the brain so that was epidural then about the subdural space the subdural space is the space between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater so we can see this black colored gap is the subdural space between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater and uh, this subdural space it ends uh, to the lower border of s2 so it ends at the level of lower border of s2 so that was about the dura mater next about the arachnoid mater so arachnoid mater is a thin uh, avascular uh, membrane which is not having blood vessels so it is an avascular membrane and which is continuous above with the arachnoid mater of brain and below extends till the level of second sacral vertebra that is s2 then about the sub arachnoid space sub arachnoid space is the gap between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater which is called as sub arachnoid space the sub arachnoid space is also called leptomeningeal space and is the space between the arachnoid and pia mater and it contains the cerebrospinal fluid csf and uh, blood vessels supplying the spinal cord and the arachnoid uh, trabeculae are also located in the 
subarachnoid space. So next about the pia matter of brain. Pia matter is uh, the outer innermost layer. Uh, sorry, it is the innermost layer which is intimately attached to the spinal cord. It is thin and highly vascular membrane and it uh, closely invests in the spinal cord and it continues below as the phylum terminal. So here we can see a specimen where the lower end, this is the cornus medullaris, this thin thread which is tied here is the phylum terminal. This is phylum terminal which attaches to the dorsal surface of coccyx below and it has got two parts phylum terminal internum and externum. Internum extends till the level of S2 and externum below the level of S2 till the coccyx is the externum. Internum makes 15 centimeters and externum makes up to 5 centimeters. So this is a thin glistening white thread like structure extending from the tip of the conus medullaris and the dorsal surface of coccygeal vertebra and can be differentiated into internum, phylum terminal internum, initial 15 centimeters present within the dural sac and phylum terminal externum present outside the dural sac. The other modifications of pia matter are subarachnoid septum. The subarachnoid septum, it is a pile septum which connects the dorsal surface of the spinal cord. So here is the posterior side view of the spinal cord. So along the posterior median sulcus, the um, subarachnoid septum, it is a pile septum which is present along the posterior median sulcus of the spinal cord on the dorsal side. Uh, which uh, connects to the arachnoid matter. The next modification is the ligamentum denticulatum. We can see this tooth like projection which is written as denticulate ligament otherwise called ligamentum denticulatum. They are the teeth like uh, projections. They are the transparent ribbon like thickened bands which separates the motor root from the sensory root. So this is the posterior view. So what we are seeing posterior uh, root that is the sensory root and which is separated from the anterior motor root by means of denticulate ligament or ligamentum denticulatum. So they are like tooth like projections which pierce the arachnoid matter to attach to the inner surface of dura matter. So we can see the apex the tips of them attaches to the inner surface of dura matter. And it is present on the uh, either side of the spinal cord and these uh, ligamentum denticulatum or li these ligaments they are around 21 pairs and uh, where the first pair uh, is at the foramen uh, magnum. So foramen magnum and last pair is fork like and which is between at the level of T12 and L1 spinal nerves. So it is between the level of T12 and L1 spinal nerves. Clinical importance of this ligamentum denticulatum uh, they, and other ligaments, they anchors the spinal cord in the middle of the subarachnoid space and helpful for the surgeons during chordotomy. This ligamentum denticulatum, these ligaments helps the surgeons during chordotomy uh, where the section of uh, sensory nerves to uh, relieve pain. So the section of the sensory nerves are made to relieve the pain. The procedure is called as chordotomy and these tooth like projections separates the sensory root from the motor roots. And the last modification of the pia matter is called as linear splendens. Linear splendens is present in the anterior median uh, fissure and uh, it is a thickening of the pia matter present in the anterior median fissure. Whereas subarachnoid septum present in the posterior median uh, sulcus and phylum terminal below the spinal cord and ligamentum denticulatum on either side of the spinal cord. So these are the modifications of pia matter. Next to the relations of the spinal nerves to the vertebra. So the spinal segments are not in correlation with the vertebral level. So the part of the spinal cord from which the spinal nerves are originating 
each part is called as spinal segment spinal segments and vertebral levels they do not lie in the same level so here is a table for us to understand so upper three cervical segments are in line with the three vertebral levels spinal segments lower cervical if we see we have got sixth at sixth vertebral level we will seeing the c7 spinal segment so one is added here upper thoracic at the level of t3 we see the t5 spinal segments so two spinal segments are added here and lower thoracic t7 t10 so three spinal segments are added in the lumbar l1 at the level of l1 vertebral level l5 spinal segment is located so almost three to five spinal segments are added in sacrococcygeal at the level of l5 we have all sac coccygeal sacra s1 to s5 and coccyx is present almost six to ten spinal segments are added so this is an important table for you to note down now let us understand the external features of the spinal cord uh, external features we can differentiate into fissures and sulci so here is the cross section of the spinal cord showing external and internal features as well so this fissure what we see anteriorly this is the anterior side which is called as anterior median fissure this deep groove is called anterior median fissure and it contains anterior spinal artery and posterior median sulcus which contains uh, a septum of neuroglial tissue uh, which extends into the spinal cord known as posterior median septum so here posterior median septum and there are two anterolateral sulci where the motor roots get origin from where here anteriorly the motor roots are getting origin this is called anterior uh, lateral sulcus similarly we are having posterolateral sulcus on each side where the sensory roots gain their origin and two posterolateral sulci and each uh, spinal nerve has the anterior and the posterior root we can see the anterior root the red one and blue one is the posterior root uh, and anterior root uh, transmits the motor information where the origin of the anterior horn cells of the gray matter the uh, and uh, exits the spinal cord through the anterolateral sulcus so it is the spinal cord through anterolateral sulcus the posterior root transmits the sensory information and have sensory ganglion attached you can see the cell body of sensory neuron this is the dorsal root ganglion or uh, sensory ganglion attached to them so the origin from the posterior horn of the gray matter so here is the posterior horn of the uh, gray matter and exit through the posterolateral sulcus of the spinal cord and anterior and posterior roots merge here uh, just before the intervertebral foramen and form a trunk of the spinal nerve so the trunk is very short and soon after exiting through the uh, intervertebral foramen exiting through the vertebral column it divides into four branches anterior ramus it divides further into anterior ramus posterior ramus communicating ramus and meningeal ramus meningeal ramus meant to supply the meninges communicating ramus communicates with the sympathetic chain which is outside the vertebral column and anterior ramus or the ventral ramus usually have a longer course and they contribute in the formation of brachial plexus and lumbosacral plexus for upper and lower limb and whereas the posterior or the dorsal ramus these uh, posterior ramus they are usually short in their course and they uh, supply the muscles paravertebral muscles and they supply the skin over the dorsal that is the torso or back of the trunk so this is all about the external features and the little bit about the internal structure and also the formation of spinal nerve so let us uh, un uh, understand today with a question so subarachnoid space extends at ends at so i hope you all know the answer now it ends at the level of s2
so both subarachnoid space and subdural space terminates at the lower border of S2 next is the ligamentum denticulatum as uh, how many pairs of teeth like projections so I hope you all know the answer I have already said 21 pairs so the pair matter of the spinal cord has a pair of denticulate ligaments on each side of the spinal cord with 21 attachments which attach to the arachnoid and inner surface of dura mater and uh, these ligamentum denticulatum has a clinical importance during chordotomy surgeries. So this uh, completes the external features of spinal cord. Uh, next session we would continue with the internal features of spinal cord. Thank you.